were approached by GE to look at this project, which was a really interesting challenge. So the structures that we were asked to work on were test facilities where they tested um, aeroplane engines, um, including Concorde's engines. GE uh, introducing newer engines, more modern engines, and they're going to have to have different facilities, so they needed to make way for the new facilities while getting rid of some of the old. Immediately to one side of the site is a facility where the engines come in and get stripped down. They then go all through the, the huge process of rebuild, repair, inspection, test. But at the the end of the, 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 the very last part of the project, where the engines have their final assembly, just happened to be on the immediate opposite side of our site. Four metres away, where completed aeroplane engines worth millions of pounds were coming out. The structure that we were working on was incredibly strong. The structure had to withstand possible huge amounts of energy and we had to think about the vicinity of the ongoing works, of how we were going to do it, in particular dust. If an aeroplane had a catastrophic failure in five years' time, uh, the engine was recovered, and let's say there was some brick dust found in the engine and people would be scratching their heads as to, why oh, is the brick dust in the engine? Oh, let's have a look at the engine's history. Oh, five, five years ago, it was at GE Cardiff, so I really focused on dust noise vibration. So you've got to imagine that this structure was, was built to withstand a Concorde engine running at full power. So it was an incredibly strong structure. Sometimes tough is, is actually our, our ally, our friend, because if something's reasonably tough, you've, you've got the knowledge, the experience of knowing that it's you know, you're not going to get a collapse or anything like that, so that's good. But then you've got to make sure that you can obviously get the ultimate goal is to get the, the structure down. What we opted to do was to try and leave the extremities of the structures up for as long as possible so we could use those as shielding the, on, the, the GE operation from our ongoing works. We came up with sequencing where we could leave as much as the outside of the structure as possible while we worked within the site and then we did the, the extremities last so as not to impede and to offer protection. When we got to the point where we had to take the, the outside parts of the structure down, we used lots of dust suppression, dust suppression machine where we can get right up to, the, to where the works are going on. And then we used what we term as a blast mat, a big, big, just a big conveyor belt shield that we could hang from either um, a demolition rig or a crane. But we put some innovation on that as well. We put some uh, jets on top of the blast mat. So while that was working, we could be jetting water onto the face of demolition. So by using a blast mat, we have lots of examples where if there's any debris during the demolition process, it just projects as if it was going to project out the side, but side, but it hits the mat and it's diverted back into the site. The dust boss that we use, that we innovated ourselves, is, is so different because we can get it nearly 20 metres in the air. We can really pinpoint where we're getting the dust suppression, whereas we're not trying to shoot mist from metres and metres away. It's really targeted dust suppression that works fabulous. By the end of the project, we were really satisfied that we executed the project without interfering with GE's ongoing day-to-day -day operations. 